Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you Jesus, thou art worthy today, thou art worthy of praise today. Soul say yes, our souls say yes, yes Lord, our souls say yes Lord, all day yes Lord, yes to your will, yes to your ways, yes Lord. We humbly pray, with a joyful heart today. Thank you Jesus, hallelujah, yes Lord, oh yes, yes Lord, help me to praise him saints, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, thou art worthy of all other praise, yes Lord, oh yes, yes Lord, oh yes, yes Lord, thank you Jesus, oh yes Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. Hope comes from God's grace. The lesson study for this Sunday, April 30th, 2023, is entitled Hope Comes from God's Grace. This is the ninth study lesson of the 2023 Spring Quarter Study Series, based upon the Church of God in Christ Commentary, Sunday School Study Plan, for studying the Holy Bible. The centralized theme for this Spring Quarter is about hope. Today's study is the final study of Unit 2 which covered the month of April, and its centralized unit theme has focused upon the Resurrection Hope. Our Sunday School study motto is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Today's Bible Truth Paul warns us against the deception that can come from satanic sources. Today's Memory Verses 2 Thessalonians 2.16 Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. 2 Thessalonians 2.17 Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Lesson name. After participating in this lesson, all participants should be able to explore the purpose for which God has called us. Trust that God has a significant plan for our lives. Pray for a clear understanding of God's assignments for us. Life need for today's lesson. Sunday school students will remember that God has called them to make a difference to the lost and dying in this world. Bible learning. To understand how we need to be intentional in living our lives for God. Bible application. To appreciate the importance of becoming children of a holy God. Students for responses. Students will develop ways to discern the difference between God's word and false teachings. Our Holy Bible reference applications for this study is taken from the second epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and verses 9 through 17. Today's lesson background assignment is to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and incorporate the gained insights into our study of today's lesson entitled, Hope Comes from God's Grace. The Man of Lawlessness 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. 2 Thessalonians 2, 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 Who apposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God? 2 Thessalonians 2 5. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things? 2 Thessalonians 2, 6. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. 
2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now let it will let, until he be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians 2.12 That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Stand firm. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2 14 Whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2 15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word, or our epistle. 2 Thessalonians 2 16 Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. 2 Thessalonians 2.17 Comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. The purpose of this portion of Paul's epistle to the Thessalonians was to correct the false prophecy, and sayings that were being generated by false teachers about the day of the Lord. The false teachers had caused the Thessalonians to have a serious misunderstanding about the coming day of the Lord Jesus' returning. The Thessalonians' church had matured, and grown in its numbers, but so too have those that persecute the Grand Ole Church, the prosecutors, and Christian haters, guided by satanic strongholds, were warring fiercely against the Grand Ole Church. They were playing word games with the Grand Ole Church by using confusing phraseology. The Day of the Lord, Judgment Day, versus the Day of the Lord, Jesus Returns. The false teachers had put pressure on the Grand Old Church to reject their faith teachings of Christianity by debating and arguing that the Day of the Lord was already happening to them and that you could see the evidence of it by looking at the amount of their persecution and bad days and bad things happening to members of the congregation. They were convincing the church not only was the day of the Lord happening to them, but also that they had been left behind. The resurrection had already happened, they argued, and they were found unqualified to go to heaven, and now God was persecuting them in judgment, with the hands of their enemies. 1. The Grand Ole Church had become discouraged, stressed out, and ready to backslide because of the increasing persecutions, and the difficulties of living day to day. Some in the Grand Ole Church had lost their incentive to continually persevere in the faith. 2. Some in the Grand Ole Church, after having been deceived by false teachers and confused them about the second coming of Jesus, were teaching other doctrine and philosophy. 3. Many in the Grand Ole Church had become disobedient to divine commands, particularly by refusing to work for a living. Paul wrote to confront these three problems by offering them comfort from their Paul revealed to the Thessalonians that the eventful day had not come, and would not come before certain other events would occur. This day will happen on the day when the Lord Jesus comes to receive glory with his holy people, and all the people who have believed will be amazed at Jesus. You will be in that group of believers because you believe what we told you. That is why we always pray for you. We ask our God to help you live the good way that he called you to live. 
the goodness you have makes you want to do good, and the faith you have makes you work. We pray that with his power God will help you do these things more and more. We pray all this so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ can have glory in you, and you can have glory in him. That glory comes from the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers, we have something to say about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to talk to you about that time when we will meet together with him. Do not become easily upset in your thinking or afraid if you hear that the day of the Lord has already come. Someone may have said this in a prophecy or in a message, or you may read it in a letter that someone tells you came from us. Do not let any person fool you in any way. That day of the Lord will not come until the turning away from God happens, and that day will not come until the man of evil appears. He belongs to hell. He is against any so-called God or anything that people worship. And the man of evil puts himself above anything called God or anything that people worship. And that man of evil even goes into God's temple and sits there. Then he says that he is God. I told you when I was with you that all this would happen. Do you not remember? And you know what is stopping that man of evil now. He is being stopped now so that he will appear at the right time. The secret power of evil is already working in the world now. But there is one who is stopping that power. And he will continue to stop it until he is taken out of the way. Then that man of evil will appear. And the Lord Jesus will kill him with the breath that comes from his mouth and will destroy him with the glory of his coming. The man of evil will come by the power of Satan. He will have great power, and he will do many different false miracles, signs, and wonders. He will use every kind of evil to trick those who are lost. They are lost because they refused to love the truth if they loved the truth. They would be saved but they refused to love the truth. So God sends them something powerful that leads them away from the truth. He sends them that power so they will believe something that is not true. So all those who do not believe the truth will be judged guilty. They did not believe the truth, and they enjoyed doing evil. Brothers, the Lord loves you. God chose you from the beginning to be saved. So we must always thank God for you. You are saved by the spirit that makes you holy and by your faith in the truth. God used the good news that we preach to call you to be saved. He called you so that you can share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers, stand strong and continue to believe the teachings we gave you. We taught you those things in our speaking and in our letter to you. We pray that the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father will comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say, God loved us, through his grace he gave us a good hope and comfort that continues forever. And now, brothers, pray for us. Pray that the Lord's teaching will continue to spread quickly, and pray that people will give honor to that teaching, just as happened with you. And pray that we will be protected from bad and evil people. Not all people believe in the Lord. The day of the Lord's judgment is a day when God executes divine judgment upon sinful unsaved generations of mankind. But before that great terrifying day of the Lord's judgment upon mankind, there will be the day of the Lord Jesus' returning. Before the day of the Lord's judgment upon the earth, there will be numerous attacks by the enemies of God, upon the children of God, that have learned by faith to walk with God. These attacks upon the household of faith will be entirely successful. Many children of God have died, and many children of God shall die in the name of the Lord, for simply telling the world the gospel of Jesus. Death will come to those that simply spread the good news that Jesus, the Christ can save them, and deliver them from the chains of sin, that bind them to eternal death. On the day of the Lord Jesus' return appearing, Jesus will appear to gather his sisters and brothers, those born of the same Spirit of God, and have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb of God. These children of God that are resting in death, will be resurrected from the dead, and together with those that are alive, will be taken into heaven, to be with him in his kingdom. This will literally happen and fulfill the prophecy given in Act 1.11. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And also in Isaiah 25, 8-9.
he will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The day of the Lord has already occurred in Jewish history, and most likely the false teachers to the grand old church of the Thessalonians were of Jewish persuasion, and were speaking to a majority Gentile Christian church, trying to convert them to Judaism. Isaiah 2.12 For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 13, 6 Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Isaiah 13, 9 Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Isaiah 34, 8 Foot is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompense is for the controversy of Zion. Jeremiah 46, 10 For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and may drunk with their blood, for the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Lamentation 2.22 Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escaped nor remained, those that I have swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. Ezekiel 13. 5 Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Ezekiel 30, 3 For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. Joel 1 15 Alas for the day for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Joel 2, 1 Blow you the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Joel 2 11 And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that execute his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Joel 2 31 The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Joel 3 14 Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Amos 5.18 Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord to what end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness, and not light. Amos 5.20 Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness, and not light even very dark, and no brightness in it? Obadiah 1.15 For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. 